Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at the Windows Vista Extended Kernel, which allows the operating system to run some programs that are normally incompatible with it. These include newer versions of Firefox, Chrome, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, even OBS Studio. And it's really cool and it makes Windows Vista a little bit more usable in the modern day. Of course, using Windows Vista as your primary operating system is obviously not recommended by anybody because it's been out of support for years now. But for those who are just messing around with Vista in a virtual machine or on an old computer and just wanting to run some new programs or some newer programs on it, this is a great way of doing that. And it's similar to Kernel X and All Key for Applications in that way. So I'll have the site linked down below. And once you get here, you'll want to go to the Download tab here on the left. There's also an FAQ uh, that you could read through if there are any questions you have and see if they've already been answered. But before you install Vista Extended Kernel itself, there are a couple of other things you need to get. These are two Windows Vista update packages. In fact, one of these is for Windows Server 2008, which works fine on Windows Vista. Uh, so you want to just click here, it'll open up the Microsoft Update Catalog, and you want to grab the uh, one for Windows Server 2008 for x64 based systems. This is a 2019 security update. This update here did receive a Vista specific release, so you'll want to download that one. And then we're just going to go to our virtual machine here. I've got everything uh, copied over here and we're just going to install both of these update packages starting with the first one on that list and then go into the second one. Basically what you can do is just go down this list here. So get this update, get this update, then you can actually install this extended kernel itself. And then after you do that, there are a couple of additional packages that you could get. One of them that is recommended is the Media Foundation update. I've got this on the virtual machine as well. But there are also some Nvidia drivers that you could get if you have a computer with an Nvidia card in it. So there they are. Now it is important to note that this whole thing only functions on a 64-bit version of Windows Vista. So if you have Windows Vista 32-bit, you're not going to be able to run the extended kernel. And just like that, we've installed the first update, restarted, and we're going to start on the second one here. And there we go. So now we can open up the Vista extended kernel folder. And in here you want to find the setup executable, which is down here, and you want to make sure to run it as an administrator. So it brings up this command prompt window we're just going to press any other key except for r to begin the setup and that's it and by the way as of me filming this video the march 2023 update release revision one is the latest version of the vista extended kernel so yeah it's finished we're going to press any key to continue and it'll get out of that and now we're going to install the media foundation platform update so we go into this folder here we have a cmd file you want to run this as an administrator as well and it tells you vista extended kernel must be installed we're going to hit any key to continue and there we go press any key to exit and we're done and now we're just going to restart our system so when you have everything installed you're not going to notice any difference right off the bat like i can try to run this firefox installer here that needs windows 7 and it's going to yell at me and say that firefox can't be installed on this operating system version so what you have to do is open up notepad and you want to create an ini file to be saved in the windows folder and let me just quickly walk you through what each of these options do so enable it's pretty self-explanatory you put one it'll be enabled major version and minor version control what nt version number is reported to whatever application you're running so for example if i want an application to think it's running under windows 7 i would put major version 6 minor version 1 because that is windows 7's nt version because windows vistas is 6.0 build number is whatever windows build number you want to be reported so i'm going to put 7601 which is windows 7 s p1 rtm now whatever you have in the brackets up here is basically what you're telling these version numbers to be applied to so global will apply it across the entire system whatever application you run will have these uh, version settings reported to it but if you only want a specific application say like firefox here if i install firefox and i only want firefox to think it's running under windows 7 7601 i could paste the file path to the firefox executable in these brackets and this makes the whole thing very versatile because if you want another application to have a different window 
Windows version number reported to it, you could make a new line in here and fill out just, you know, copy and paste this here, and then change the settings to your liking and paste whatever application path to that executable is in here. And this is applied instantaneously, by the way, once we save this file. So let me just open up Winver here, and I'll show you again, it's, it's reporting 6.0, build 6003. So I'm going to go ahead and save this to my desktop, because we're not going to be able to immediately save it to the Windows folder, because the application is not running under elevated privileges. So we're going to save this as a uh, change the file type to all files and call it osver.ini. So now if we close out of this, and we open up uh, the system root directory, which is just the Windows folder, and we just drag this file into here, and authenticate. And now if I run Winver again, it will immediately report the version number as 6.1 build 7601. It still says service pack two, that is something that we cannot change, but this will now allow me to run this application here. So I actually haven't tested this version of Firefox. This is the latest version of Firefox as of me filming this video. I did test version 102.0 ESR. This one is confirmed to work, but I'm curious. We're going to try uh, the latest version of Firefox and see if it installs here. So the installer runs, but that doesn't necessarily mean the application itself is going to run because I had that happen with a couple other applications during my off camera testing. They would install fine, but when you actually try to run the application, it'll spit out a bunch of error messages and it kind of looks like that's what's going to happen here. So Firefox has stopped working. We're just going to hit close the program. Application failed to initialize properly. So yeah, it doesn't look like uh, this version of Firefox. Fox is going to be able to work. Oh, wait a second. Look at that. I spoke too soon. Never mind. It's running here. So. <laughs> Here you go. And yep, that's Firefox 111.0.1. And just to show you on my host computer here, I am running Firefox 111.0.1. You just have to kind of mess around and, and just try various applications. There is a list over on MSFN of uh, a bunch of applications that have been tested to work on uh, the Vista Extended Kernel or with the Vista Extended Kernel rather. But the post that I was looking at was published in late 2021. So a lot of the text that says current is out of date. So you just have to keep that in mind. But yeah, so the latest version of Firefox works under Windows Vista, which is, uh, which is pretty Pretty awesome. So yeah, here it is. I've also got uh, LibreOffice here. This is the latest version of LibreOffice as of me filming this video, and it works. Uh, just to show you, if I uh, let me just cancel out of the setup here, so I show you what happens without the uh, Vista Extended Kernel running. So if you ever want to change your settings, you just want to open up osver.ini again, and I'll just add some dashes here in front of the global tag to basically prevent this from applying. So now we're back to 6.0. So if I run. Uh, this setup executable here, there it says it needs Windows 7 Service Pack 1 or newer. So if I go back here and we get rid of these and save it again and run the setup executable again, this time it will open up just fine. And we can go with a custom installation and just get everything sure. And there we go. Check it out. So here we are running LibreOffice. Isn't that lovely? So this is something that we very well may revisit in future video projects where I'm just messing around with Vista and I find some application. I'm like, can we run this? Let's try it under the Vista Extended Kernel and just see what happens. Because um, there's really, I mean, you can put whatever version number you want in that INI file. Of course, it doesn't really mean that it's going to work. I already tried this like with running some software that's designed for Windows 10 just for the heck of it. And none of it worked, uh, which wasn't really surprising. But like, let me just show you what happens if I go back in here and open up this. Uh, we could change this to major version 10, minor version 0, build number, I don't know, version 9926. Uh, I think that's a Windows 10 build. It actually is. This is a technical preview build of Windows 10, which it's funny how I remember that. But uh, that was like 2014, 2015. That was a while back. It doesn't seem like it was, though. But yeah, time's a thing. Anyways, if you happen to, you know, try to be running an application and it says it needs Windows 7 or later, uh, your chances are probably better than than, than anything else, because that's what I've experienced anyway, because Windows 7 is just a version newer than Windows Vista. But with a handful of applications like the ones demoed here and the ones on that list, it is totally possible to get them running on Vista. So uh, yeah, that is going to wrap it up for this little video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.